I was hitchhiking one time out of Portland, Oregon. I was trying to get to a small town to uh, catch a freight train where they changed crews. It was near Pendleton. And a fellow picked me up who worked for the Union Pacific Railroad. He found out my plan and he said, well, I'll see what I can do. I'm only going to the Dalles. He said, trains don't stop there. They usually go through about 50 miles an hour. So, when we got to town, we drove to the yardmaster's house. Uh, we went in, he didn't tell me what he was going to do, but he points to me and says, this guy's a section foreman, he's going to section foreman school in Salt Lake City, will you stop the next train for him? <laughs> and I said, sure, no problem. I go, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> There's a union magazine sitting there, so I started flipping through, so I can talk, uh, talk a little shop if I have to, but it turned out the train wasn't coming for over an hour, so. Uh, we went to this fellow's trailer, I got a shower in, and we went to a tavern, he had a couple of beers, he had his radio with him, and uh, when the train was due in, the yard master called him, and we went down, I got in the third engine, the conductor came back to make sure I was comfortable, and away we went. So, quite the scam, I used it one other time in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and I pitched like there from the Black Hills. And, Got into town late and found that the uh, freeway was closed west of Laramie. It was uh, s snowy and drifted in. So I phoned up the Union Pacific said, Hey, this is Wayne Iverson. I'm going to section four of school in Salt Lake City. <laughs> the roads are closed. Can I ride your train? He said, Yeah, come on down. The engineers are on their way. They'll leave in about 30 minutes. <laughs> They call people who work on uh, section gangs or work on the track uh, candy dancers. It's another colorful uh, term for that. And that actually came from the fact that the tools they used in the early days were, were made by the Gandhi tool company out of Chicago. This chapter is called Mistaken Identity. <laughs> on or off, boxcars and black cars are two of the most difficult cars to hop on uh, when moving or on the fly. You can get in a boxcar door when a train is stopped the same way you can get out of a swimming pool by jumping up and pushing up with your arms and swinging your legs in. But even that is hard. The floor of a boxcar is almost chest high to me and I'm over six feet tall. When the train is moving, you have to throw your pack in before you hop it. And if you don't make it, you lose your gear, but hopefully not any body parts. The best way to get in, into a moving boxcar is to grab the front handle front door handle and swing legs first up into the car. I only did this twice in 1976 in the suburbs of Chicago. I had taken the subway to the Burlington Northern Yard and crawled into a boxcar on a train bound for Minneapolis. It pulled out of the main Chicago yard but went only a short distance west before it came to a stop. I got out of the boxcar to find out what was wrong. It turned out there was a bad order on the train car with a flat wheel that the engineers could feel. The steel wheels go flat on the brake slot and the wheel grinds metal on metal against the tracks. After several maneuvers, they set the bad order off on a side track. If they don't catch it in time, it could cause the train to derail. Bad thoughts are very much like this. They can derail your train of thought if you don't set them off promptly. As the Buddha said in the Dharmapada, as the shadow follows the body, as we think, so we become. Do whatever it takes. Exercise, take a cold shower, meditate, but don't let a bad order thought trap you in a bad order mood. Remember what Confucius said, man who break wind in church, sit in own pew. <laughs> While the offending car was getting set off, the train blocked an intersection in a well-to-do Chicago suburb. Several well-dressed people out for walks or bike rides or walking home from tennis waited at the crossing with me. They had not seen me get off the train. I chatted with one of them as I watched for the train to begin moving again so I could reboard my boxcar. What do you do, he asked me. Oh, I'm riding this train to Minneapolis. He thought I was joshing him and shortled. When the train started to move out, I asked everyone to step back farther from the tracks. I stood about 30 feet away from the tracks and watched the cars toward the back of the train move forward. When I spotted my boxcar, I edged closer to the tracks. The train was accelerating rapidly. 
As the front of my box car reached me, I began to sprint. I ran along the pavement next to the tracks, grabbed the front door handle, and swung up into the car. I stood quickly and waved to my slack-jawed audience. <laughs> my elation soon dissolved when I didn't see my backpack. I was in the wrong car. I hopped off and ran back to the intersection. Wrong boxcar, I explained to the incredulous bystanders. The speed of the train was now out of my comfort zone, but I repeated the same maneuver on the correct car. The yuppies were even more dumbfounded. Since I was reasonably well-dressed and hadn't had time to get filthy, as usually happens on a freight train ride, they had mistaken me for one of their own. Mistaken identity can happen to the best of us. Once Jesus was touring heaven and stopped to chat with St. Peter at the pearly gates. Peter asked Jesus if he would watch the gate while he ran an errand. Jesus agreed. While he was there, a disheveled, disoriented man came to the entrance. Jesus asked if he could help him. Well, I don't know. I don't remember who I am. Well, is there anything about your life that you do recall? Well, pretty sure I was some sort of a woodworker. That's a start. Is there anything else you remember? Yeah, I had a son in some sort of miraculous way. Tears filled Jesus' eyes. He embraced the man and said, Father. The old man squinted quizzically at Jesus and replied, Pinocchio? <laughs>